in LA this week. COVID-19 is still serious. Don't let up. It preys on our division. It preys when we get lazy. It preys when we think that it's gone and it's not. Batteries, got a lot of batteries. We're excited to welcome all the residents to the Safe Center so they can safely and properly dispose of their household hazardous material. This is their own personal money and making this loan even out there is just so great. Hello everyone, I'm Saida Pagan. Here's what's happening in LA this week. Kedron Community Health Center has been a South LA location for free COVID-19 testing for weeks. Recently, the testing site was paid a visit by Mayor Eric Garcetti, Council Member Curran Price, and activist Anthony Anderson, all of them urging the community at large to get tested. We're here just to encourage uh, neighbors and friends to get tested. Uh, it's so very, very important, especially uh, during this uh, pandemic. But we're joined by the mayor and uh, Anthony Anderson uh, with a donation of masks, uh, sanitizers, just encouraging folks to remember the importance of being tested and to come here to Kedron. Testing is free. Uh, doesn't matter what your documentation is. Uh, everyone is welcome. And so we are just encouraging folks to take advantage of the opportunity to be tested and to keep our community safe. Our Asian Pacific Islander community, our African American community, and our Latino community, we are suffering. You have to put the numbers out there of how many people are positive. That is not something to play with. We're talking about an entire community that could be wiped out if we don't adhere to these um, restrictions. COVID-19 is still serious. Don't let up. It preys on our division. It preys when we get lazy. It preys when we think that it's gone, and it's not. We have a record number of people in our hospital beds right now. And while we have strong enough capacity in our hospitals to meet that need, let's try to avoid anybody else getting into those ICU beds, into those hospital beds by the things we do, to know our status, and of course, to always washing our hands, wearing our masks, keeping our distance, and whenever possible, staying at home. These are things that uh, we need to do to ensure that we can flatten this curve. As the mayor said, you know, getting tested is not a hall pass to go out and to party and to have fun. You know, getting tested is for our essential workers who are on the front line, uh, who deal with people on a daily basis, who need to know if they've been affected by this disease as to not spread it uh, to those out there. Visit coronavirus.lacity.org forward slash testing. There are over 100 sites here in Los Angeles that you can go to, all are free of charge. So please, uh, go get tested. A nonprofit called The Change Reaction and John Lee of Council District 12 have been doing great work through their Small Business Relief Fund. And seeing that their work is far from over, they have extended the program to help even more small businesses. The latest small business to be saved from extinction is Joyce's Coffee Shop and Restaurant in Northridge. You know, I'm excited to be here today to talk about a program, expanding a program. Uh, this is the expansion of what started as the Council District 12 Small Business Relief Fund. And in a few short months, we have been able to help over 30 businesses in our partnership with the Change Reaction. We've given everything to small restaurants, coffee shops. Um, we just gave one to San Carlo Deli. We just reopened them. I saw John Lee on the news, and I saw him hand someone a check to a sub shop that had been here for like 40 years, and it was right in our community, and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, this is, I have to reach out because we've been here 55 something years, so maybe we can be that lucky people too. What this program allows them to do is zero interest loans over a longer three to five year you know, timeline to give them that opportunity and that sense of security so that they can, you know, keep their doors open. Once we make our donation, we don't get it back. It's not a loan that comes back to the change reaction or me and my wife personally. It basically goes back into the fund to redistribute back into the community. People know when they repay the loan, they're basically paying it forward so that new businesses can get that funding as well. It has made us so grateful that two people would even 
consider putting money towards businesses, their own personal money, and making this loan even out there is just so great. What's great about what Greg is doing is he's not just running off doing it somewhere, he's actually partnering with the city officials to help figure out where that need is. And so it really is a, a partnership. I always feel like the government is so worried about the loss, about the mistake, about the loan that they give that doesn't get paid back. I'm not worried about that. I'm looking at the overall goal of saying, hey, if I can get 70% of these loans paid back and save 70% of the businesses, I look at that on the macro as being a victory. You know, 87% of businesses in the county of LA have less than nine, nine employees. They are truly the backbone of our economy, and that's why it's so important that we do whatever we can to keep their doors open. Do you know the best way to make a city great? Well, according to an exciting grants program called LA 2050, all it takes is five simple principles and a bold competition of ideas where every finalist is a winner. LA 2050 was conceived of as a community guided initiative to create a shared vision for the future of Los Angeles. So we've just launched the seventh of the My LA 2050 Grants Challenge, which is an online crowdsourced grants challenge in which government entities, nonprofits, social enterprises, and for profits compete for $1 million total. LA 2050 is designed to inspire activism and activity around making LA the best place to play, create, connect, live, and learn. And the way we break this down is we have grants of $100,000, $50,000, $25,000, $15,000, and $10,000 across each of the five goal categories. So we will be giving away a million dollars and in those increments every one of the 25 finalists will receive some funding. When I found out I was becoming a father, I panicked. What am I gonna feed this kid? I decided I'm going to build a garden and make the best food possible, and that'll be a practice that she'll grow into. I posted on Nextdoor, hey, any other gardeners who might have extra soil, seeds, equipment? I got like 85 responses in the first few days. I decided to take a leap of faith and invite my neighbors to a monthly backyard crop swap where we could share our extras. LA County has more than 10 million people in it. If it was a state, it'd be the eighth largest. And we have a government here, a county government, that's one of the most powerful in the entire country. Los Angeles is the second largest city in the country and has a very small city council considering the number of people that it represents. In Los Angeles, I think people care but I think uh, uh, people don't know how to get involved. They don't know how to make their city a better place. It says when I read it, it brightens up my day. I feel like it's real when you read to me. It, it's like we're already the book. I feel kind of good. I don't know why it makes my body feel good. These organizations have created these incredibly um, innovative proposals about how they're going to impact Los Angeles's future and please join us and go to challenge.la2050.org and cast their vote. Even with a cascade of help and resources available to residents during this COVID-19 pandemic, the greatest challenge continues to be getting those resources to the folks who need them. Council Member Mitch O'Farrell and volunteers from local businesses were in Koreatown this week delivering bags of groceries to answer an unspoken need. All of these organizations came together um, many, many weeks ago now and decided to focus in on this community here in Koreatown to distribute into the thousands of meals uh, at this point. These food distribution programs are literally life-saving. These are the types of events that help us get through calamities like the one we're in.
I've always known one thing, and that is it's the volunteer corps that make neighborhoods work better. It's not just government, it's volunteers in our communities that are what uplift our communities. I want to make sure that people understand how much they're valued and that their contributions matter and they make a real difference. And I hope that you all feel really good. Just volunteering, it, it causes more than just a ripple when you volunteer to do something good for others. There's a lot to deal with right now, so it's going to take more people than ever with a solution-oriented outlook on, on life in general. For the moment, some local government services that were halted during the stay-at-home order have been given the green light to resume operations. The reopening of safe collection centers allows Angelinos to finally dispose of cumbersome waste responsibly. Take a look. Today is the reopening of all of our safe centers. We're excited to welcome all the residents to the safe center so they can safely and properly dispose of their household hazardous material. We had closed them at the end of March due to the pandemic, so we were closed for several months, but we are excited to reopen them today. What do you normally drop off? Like pesticides, empty, you know, paint sometimes, electronics, it's good stuff. Get rid of all my batteries and old medicines and paint. And of course, it can bring electronic waste such as computers, cell phones, TVs, uh, and small appliances as well. Lucky that I live close by, so I can come here often. I come here every couple of months, it's great. Easy place to come here, drop it off, nice and easy. Because of the pandemic, we have um, established some safety guidelines. One of them is, of course, um, bringing a face covering that they should be using at all times that is mandatory. Another thing that we are requiring is that everybody please remain in their vehicles. And lastly, we are asking that all of your material be stored in your trunk and have it unlocked. This is a free service that is offered to all City of Los Angeles and County of Los Angeles residents. We are open on the weekends only, Saturdays and Sundays from 9 to 3. Unless there is another stay at home order, then we'll have to revisit that and possibly close down. You can also visit our website where we have more information about the safe centers, and that would be www.lacitysan.org. We want to take care of the earth and make it nice for our grandchildren and other people. Take care of your earth. The Lucas Museum of Narrative Art makes six impressive hires. LA sports franchises unite for social justice. And the city attorney wins big for the homeless. All this and more up next on City Beat. Los Angeles is one step closer to meeting Eric Garcetti's 2035 goal of recycling 100% of treated water at the Hyperion Water Reclamation Plant. Installation work has commenced at the Hyperion Membrane Bioreactor Pilot Facility. The completion of this facility is scheduled for September 2021 and is a major step in seeing a sustainable future for LA. The pilot is a joint effort between LA Sanitation, LADWP, and West Basin Municipal Water District. This joint effort will test new methods that will result in 100% recycling of Hyperion's water and exceed the initial goal of treating and doubling the recycled water sent from the Hyperion plant to the West Basin Municipal Water Plant in El Segundo. The future is looking innovative and distinctively female at the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art. Six new exciting hires will lead the museum to heights of greatness and beyond. The dream team of Pilar Tompkins Rivas, Nanette Duarca Schof, Amanda Hunt, Anais Disla, Larissa Gentile and Erica Neal have all accepted the task of making the Lucas Museum a destination for any Lucasfilm exploration. The museum's completion date of construction is yet to be determined, but anyone interested can keep up to date at lucasmuseum.org for news and information. LA City Attorney Mike Fewer has announced two important victories in favor of homeless housing. 
the California Supreme Court denied the petition for review filed by the Venice Stakeholders Association against the Pacific Sunset a bridge home shelter. Second, the city prevailed against all causes of action filed against it so far in the challenge to the Griffith Park Bridge Home Shelter. The Venice Shelter has 154 beds and the Griffith Park Shelter has 100 beds and is set to open immediately. These facilities provide not only shelter but hygiene stations, storage, food and management services of up to three years. Eleven Los Angeles sport teams have come together for a five-year collaboration that promotes social justice and ending racial inequality. Alliance LA is comprised of the Ducks, Angels, Dodgers, Chargers, Clippers, Los Angeles Football Club, Galaxy, Kings, Lakers, Sparks, and Rams. Alliance LA will partner with the nonprofit Play Equity Fund in helping support social equality. With public schools closed for the foreseeable future, it's not clear as to exactly where students will be having classes this coming school year. But the academic school year will begin soon, and Team Cedillo in Council District 1 wants their kids to be ready. So let the backpack giveaway begin. So today uh, I'm partnership with a 99 cents only store. We're distributing 1,500 backpacks with supplies. Uh, this is like coming as a donation from the 99 cent store uh, for all the kids in Westlake. In the backpacks, they find uh, supplies that, like notebooks, pens, pencils, glue, uh, but also they are gonna find some like a uh, hygiene uh, uh, supplies, like a mask and also hand sanitizer. These are very difficult times for everyone. And there's a lot of people that are unemployed. And Westlake is one of the uh, areas that have been impacted the most by the pandemic. So this is for us uh, something that uh, we're going to continue doing. Councilmember City is committed to continue bringing all these resources to the community. A lot of the people we serve are very low income individuals, many from mixed status families and from very low socioeconomic status. So we're really trying to ensure that those families are getting all of the services that they can during this time. And school supplies is one of those important items. love to be a part of the community. We want to be a part of the communities that we serve. We operate uh, in, in the communities of LA, and this is just a great opportunity to, to be a part of it and give back to the communities, give back to our customers that are so important. These kids are going to go back to school, whether it's at home or whether it's uh, a hybrid or physically at school, and we think it's important that they get a, a new backpack to go back to school with the materials. We're also providing $1,500, $1,500 $10 gift cards to each family. We, we love to see the smiling faces as people walked up and we were able to give the backpacks and the look on the kids' faces. And we just want to be a part of this. We wanted this to be a part of something bigger as we move on. Okay, we can all agree that having restaurants open only to immediately close again is a bummer. But the good news is that if you want to eat out, LA's got some really great food trucks to choose from and they're taking reservations. The food trucks, we, we get together uh, every Thursday for Beach Eats right here in uh, Marina del Rey. Uh, I am uh, part of the uh, Rolling Laughter food truck. Pues yo los invito a que vengan y disfruten. Esto es algo muy bonito, este, que apoyen a los negocios pequeños como nosotros para que podamos seguir trabajando bien. So, obviamente nosotros seguimos todas las reglas de salubridad. Uh, cuidamos bien el producto, que, que salga, que esté rico, que esté saludable. Todo, todo, todo está bien. Entonces nos gustaría que salgan más y que nos, nos, nos apoyen en ese sentido. The pandemic has definitely hurt our business. We were quarantined for the first six weeks once the pandemic happened, um, and we did not work at all. Once we felt that we quarantined and we felt safe, and we started doing home deliveries. So we started offering contactless deliveries to all homes, from Orange County to Simi Valley, all over Los Angeles area. With COVID, basically the business has has dropped probably like 90 percent 
it's slowly picking up. The, the positive part where a food truck is, is mobile, unlike a restaurant, unlike brick and mortar, we can actually go to folks. So we can go to apartment complexes. We can go to condo complexes. It's absolutely amazing because I really don't go out where other people are and this keeps you separated from them. As I'm older and I have issues, I stay in, except for this. Before, I mean, people would come and come to our window, order the food, and they would sit on the beach, and they would linger around, and it would be like a social gathering. It would be really fun. Now it's a contactless ordering system and delivery. So they order through an app system from the BFT app. They place their order there. They give us the time of pickup. Um, our customer comes, picks it up. We don't touch um, any credit cards, any money. You know, we're taking extra care in the prep to make sure that our staff and, and the staff of other food trucks are doing the same thing to make sure the food is fresh, healthy, and uh, delicious for you to eat. Los Angeles has seen dozens of terrific summer events canceled this year. This pandemic has made large public gatherings a really bad idea. But if there's one thing showbiz folks know how to do, it's improvise. Just check out what the team at the Pershing Square Concert Series is cooking up for all of us online. The Pershing Square Downtown Stage is a six-week concert series that we've done for 15 years. Uh, we have about 5,000 people a night. So when um, the, the pandemic hit, of course, we weren't able to do that concert series. A lot of us, we, we had a lot of shows that we were supposed to be working. Artists, there were a lot of shows that they were supposed to be playing, and all that just went down. We had our entire concert series already booked, so we were ready to go full streams ahead with a, a really good lineup. But then, of course, given the circumstances, we had to completely change gears, pivot over to a streaming online service, and uh, basically, we had to start from scratch. And I said, Okay, I've got a concept. What if we take the concert series virtual? We had our first concert last Saturday. Everybody's so happy. Everybody's loving the bands. You know, the, we had great bands in the first uh, the first round. In the second, we just finished doing the first one, and, and oh my God, I'm, I'm blown away. The bands have been amazing. All the bands are performing for free. No one is being paid for anything. And, uh, you know, artists want to perform. They want to work. They want to, they want to sing. They want to connect with their audience. And because of the situation now, I think everybody feels that this is a good way to do it. My role as Los Angeles City Controller is to, in many ways, oversee a lot of the spending of the City of Los Angeles. We also have a waste, fraud, and abuse unit. We do auditing, uh, financial and performance audits of all of the various departments of the city. Uh, we prepare the financial reports and we do the economic forecasting for the city as well. So anything having to do with the money of the city in one way or another comes through the controller's office. But among the things that we have put up recently is a COVID resource hub. And there are, of course, a lot of different websites with information about resources, but we wanted to organize it in a different way. And so we have really easy to use boxes that anybody can click on. So for example, if you are a freelancer, or if you are a property owner, or if you are a renter, if you're a small business person, if you're a senior, there's a box for you to click on with resources that are specific to you. And of course, in many cases, there are many boxes that might apply to you, but this is meant to be an easy way to organize that information so that it's readily accessible. We have 
the virtual checkbook of the city. Every single dollar that has been spent over the course of the last 10 years, you can search by word, you can search by vendor. We have to pay for each and every single employee who works for the city, payroll period by payroll period, and how much of that is base pay, how much of it is overtime, how much of it is bonus pay, how much of it is related to various kinds of other compensation. And we have all of the special funds in the city, and there are hundreds of them, and we keep track of that accounting in real time. And let's be honest, there are a lot of reasons that people don't often feel very trusting of their government. And we've had our problems here in Los Angeles. And so the role of the controller is to expose all of the information of the city so that people are accountable. Ignite the match with a virtual art walk. Enjoy South African cultural arts live or sign up for a music business masterclass. All this and more next on Virtual Things to Do. Join Council Member Bob Blumenfield and the Department of Cultural Affairs Los Angeles for Ignite the Match, Madrid Theater Cultural Hub Virtual Art Walk. This online event will showcase many local musicians, artists, and filmmakers, as well as highlight the critical work that's being done in the West Valley to create more opportunities to foster creativity. Drop by online and check out Ignite the Match, Virtual Art Walk, Saturday, July 25th. RSVP and get your free ticket at 1111acc.org. Learn about Afro-Diaspora cultures and create art that brings cultures alive with South African Cultural Arts Live, led by Ronika Pinkney, with special guest Najid Agendotan. Join several sessions to share Yoruba drum rhythms and songs. Lessons learned and art created from this workshop series will be featured in the virtual procession at the 10th annual Day of the Ancestors Festival of the Masks at the Lamert Park Art Walk. All ages are welcome and invited to participate in this free series of public programs. Don't miss South African Cultural Arts Live. For more information, visit their listing on Eventbrite. Interact live on an online masterclass with Shep Gordon, the award-winning author and subject of Mike Myers' documentary film, Supermensch. In this masterclass, he discusses the music business and his extensive career, from managing Alice Cooper to representing celebrity chefs. Directly ask him the question you've always wanted to know. A portion of the proceeds will be donated to the Maui Food Bank. If the music biz is your thing, don't miss the Music Business Masterclass with Shep Gordon. Find out more from their listing on Eventbrite. Join the LA River walkers and watchers for the latest cleanup of the Los Angeles River bike path from Van Alden to Winnetka, which happens on the last weekend of each month. Volunteer to help preserve the LA River bike path as a community resource for all to enjoy. The goal is to ensure that local government agencies do their part to manage the area effectively and efficiently. The next LA River bike path cleanup happens Saturday, July 25th, beginning at 8 a.m. For more details, check out their listing on Facebook events. And that's a look at some virtual things to do. That's it for this edition. I'm Saida Pagan. From all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week.